Hey, people. Can you see me and hear me now? Uh, let's try that again. Can you see me and hear me now? Chris, if you're still with me, I'm new to streaming, so I thought I had everything going, but it wasn't quite there. So uh, we are now, however, once we get a slight delay, a slight pickup on the delay, we are now live. Okay. Sorry about that, 10.06. For the past six minutes, I've evidently been talking to myself. Ha! But I'm live now. So, uh, welcome. My name is Ben France, Benjamin France. This is my YouTube channel, and this is Everything Guitar. Uh, this is my first live stream, as you may have guessed by some technical difficulties, by the fact that you're just now seeing me, even though it started at 10.06, theoretically. So, uh, what is Everything Guitar? Well, Everything Guitar is my weekly web series that I do here on YouTube uh, that is, as it sounds, guitar-related. We cover things like uh, guitar lessons that we do every week, many guitar lessons over one specific concept. Uh, we cover things like uh, news in the guitar world. We may do gear reviews. We may do product reviews. We may talk about guitar. We may talk about mental focus and mental practicing. All things guitar-related. Hey, Chris. Uh... Let me know if you can actually see me. I, ha, in my newbiness of streaming, oops, shh, I forgot to hit the start stream button on YouTube, so I was talking to myself for five minutes. Can you hear me? Yellow box and a face focus box. So, okay, so you can see me. It's just doing something weird as far as the focus. Let me get rid of that. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Well, one second here. No, you're getting everything. You don't need that. You don't need that. Uh, let me just completely try to back out of this guy here. One second. Nope, and now I just killed it, I do believe. So, let's see. No valid picture to play. Let's try this again. Oh, technical difficulties own me. Okay, so it looks like we're there other than the fact that you see the histogram and so on and so forth. Yes? So now let me see. Okay, let's see if we come back on. We're going to try this again. And let me know if you're there. I think you're probably still seeing the yellow focus box, aren't you? Let me know if you're still seeing the yellow focus box. Uh, I think you probably are. I just want to make sure, and I'll be honest, I... Okay, you are seeing the yellow focus box. That's what I thought. So, here. I'm going to, since I'm not 100% sure how to get rid of that guy, we're going to kind of put him over here in the corner, and we're just going to pretend that he's not there. How does that sound? Okay. So... Over in that corner of the screen, down there, I think. Let's just pretend that that guy doesn't exist and he's not there. Because I apologize, I'm not exactly sure how to get that guy off the screen. So, we're going to pretend that that guy doesn't exist. Sound good? Awesome. So, anyway, as I was saying, uh, basically, this is my first foray into live streaming, especially with multiple cameras. You can see my iPhone setting here. I'm going to move that out of the way temporarily. So, obviously, I'm a little bit of a noob at this whole live streaming thing. But, anyway, let's talk about what Everything Guitar is about. Let's talk about what my channel is about. And then let's get into this week's actual content. This is episode 20, which is why I decided to do the live streaming episode today just to make it something kind of special something kind of unusual awesome thank you chris for letting me know i, I appreciate it i uh glad it's less distracting all right so uh everything guitar this is a series that i do new episodes every week they come out at 10 a.m central standard time on saturday mornings or uh 3 p.m gmt greenwich mean time so if you're not in the united states if you don't know what central standard time is if you just google a GMT converter and you put in your time and you put in and then you look for a GMT at 3 p.m. It'll tell you when this comes out. So these episodes are typically pre-recorded, hence the fact that this one's a little bit more d -d 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 bumpy than they usually are. But uh, I wanted to do, like I said, something cool and something special with a live episode for episode 20 to celebrate 20 weeks of doing this. And man, 20 weeks has flown by. 
So anyway, uh, what can you expect from Everything Guitar? Well, it's a weekly guitar-related series, as it sounds like. I usually cover things like guitar news. I'll also do a weekly mini guitar episode where we talk about one specific concept and break it down and kind of cover that. That can be anything from really basics. Uh, they kind of build upon each other. So going way back to episode one, I think we started out all the way back with things like the basic major scale or how to build a basic major triad or a chord, which is made out of three notes, i.e. triad. And then they kind of build on each other. I do jump around a little bit on those lesson topics because I want to keep them interesting. So we may stay for a while on one area. For instance, we stayed for about four weeks or so on on scales and then we may jump to another area for instance how to build chords we did a couple weeks on how to build a major triad how to build a minor triad and so on and then in addition to that i also do some gear reviews and also do some product reviews and we also talk a little bit about practicing strategies not only practicing with your pick in your hand but practicing up here as well and how this plays a key role in what comes down through here and here and comes out onto yes this beautiful instrument, the guitar. So uh, let's go ahead and let's jump into this week's content and let's start out by jumping into the news. Now my camera, my secondary camera is my iPhone. I've got to move it around as we're doing various things here. So bear with me while I switch scenes so we can see both of them. And then also while we get the camera in place so you can see the screen. All right. Uh, da -da -da -da. There we go. So starting out this week in the news, and I'm on guitar.com. It shows here that Tom Morello announces a surprise EP featuring Slash, a Hendrix cover, and a tribute to EVH, Eddie Van Halen. Now it says it will be released tomorrow, which was actually yesterday. This was on November the 29th. The EP dropped on November the 30th, and it is live and available anywhere that you stream music. So let's read the news release on this. And there's Mr. Morello himself, that crazy madman of guitar. Uh, Rage Against the Machine guitarist Tom Morello has announced a new surprise solo EP entitled Commandante. The five-track release will arrive tomorrow on the 30th of October. The track list includes a cover of Jimi Hendrix's track Voodoo Child, a song featuring Guns N' Roses guitarist Slash, and a track written as a tribute to Eddie Van Halen, who died earlier this month. Rest in peace, Eddie, still. That's still a loss that's felt and will be felt for a long time in the guitar community. Ah, while the Eddie Van Halen tribute is called, oh, pardon me, a Slash features a song on a song called Interstate 80, while the Eddie Van Halen tribute is called Secretariat. Rounding out the track list are two songs, Suburban Gorilla and Cato Stedman and Neptune Frost. And there is Tom's tweet drop talking about the release. And it says the EP follows the Atlas Underground, Morello's debut album under his own name, as well as the collaborative track Stand Up released earlier this year. The track list for Commandante is listed below. So, very cool. I did check that out yesterday. I would highly recommend you check out uh, Tom's EP if you have not. If you aren't familiar with Tom Morello, which depending on your age you may not be, he was originally the guitar player for Rage Against the Machine and then was an audio slave with Chris Cornell. Rest in peace to him as well. Man, we've lost a lot of incredible musicians over the past four or five years to a variety of causes and reasons. But uh, I digress. Uh, Tom has been doing his own solo thing for a little while now. Like I said in the news release, they released one solo album previously and then dropped this surprise EP. He announced it the day before it came out. So very cool. So let's take a look at other news releases this week. And uh, this was in the rumor mill. I think this actually is confirmed as of this morning. But it says Guitar Center is preparing to potentially file for bankruptcy. So let me get the camera adjusted just a smidge there. Uh, following a rocky financial period for the retailer, if you're not familiar with Guitar Center, they started out just as a company in California. They were kind of, I remember back when I first started playing guitar in the late 80s, early 90s, like the mecca for guitar players. I remember seeing photos and ads in guitar magazines in the late 80s and early 90s for just walls of guitars hanging. For It looked like a mile long and just being... Ah, uh, just completely want to go there. I, I know I'm 13 years old, but I've got to be in Los Angeles. I've got to see this wall of, at that time, neon-colored pointy guitars. So, kind of a sad statement of fact. They've went through a pretty rocky financial period, as it says here on the main screen. It says Guitar Center, after a series of financial troubles, having its credit rating downgraded earlier this year and undergoing debt restructuring. Let me see if I can get that guy a little bit better suited to where you can see this. 
Eh, I think that'll work a little better, maybe. There we go. Uh, let's see. Is reportedly preparing to file for potential bankruptcy, according to the New York Times. A source said that the retail giant missed an interest payment of $45 million, oops, earlier this month, setting off a 30-day grace period that could end in default. According to the anonymous source, Guitar Center has... There we go. Reached out to creditors to discuss a plan which could involve filing for bankruptcy this year and exiting from it in early 2021. Ah, uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. However, it still might be able to avoid filing for bankruptcy by doing what it did earlier this year, skipping an interest payment with a distressed debt exchange, which is what led to the company's third credit rating downgrade of 2020. Not good. Uh, Guitar Center is the biggest musical instrument retail chain in the U.S. with almost 300 locations across the country. Its owner, Aries Management, I have some thoughts on that we'll talk about here in a minute, declined to comment to New York Times on its reported $1.3 billion of debt. And the potential filing comes in the wake of a surge of instrument sales for the brand during the pandemic. However, COVID-19 also presented challenges for the company, which had to furlough 9,000 employees at the beginning of the pandemic. So let's talk about that just for a minute. Let me switch over just to the scene with the main camera here. And let's have a chat about that. So Guitar Center. I mentioned that I have my own thoughts on Aries management. Guitar Center has been bought and sold a few times over the past decade or so. Uh, I feel like they've kind of lost their way somewhere along the push as what happens with lots of businesses in the United States of wanting to get bigger and 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 grow and grow and grow and have more and more locations to ultimately make more money. Of course, they're a business, so that's what they set out to do. That being said, however, it really seems like this latest acquisition when Aries Management Group, I'm don't, not real familiar with them, but when they bought out Guitar Center, it seems like things really started taking a turn for the down. I know a few employees, people that work at and or have worked at Guitar Centers in the past, and they felt a big change when Aries Management took over. They said, basically conversations I've had, that it seems like that this is just a big company with a bunch of money that knows nothing about the guitar industry and the musical instrument industry and that what they're doing doesn't make any sense as far as decisions they're making, things they're wanting us to change, how we're wanting to treat our customers, where they're wanting us to focus on, so on and so forth. Anytime a company grows that big, and in particular, in my opinion, anytime a company becomes owned by somebody who doesn't really understand their industry things tend to go a little sideways. As an example, I was listening to my favorite podcast yesterday, the Steve Freeman podcast. If you don't know who Steve is, check it out. Steve, if you happen to see this, hi, you're awesome. And he was talking yesterday about people not being familiar with the industries that they're wanting to get into. And his example was somebody he worked with several years ago as a business partner that was wanting to get into the music industry. It's someone who had a background in beverage sales, or as he put it, in beer and Coke. And no, not the type you snort, but in the beverages. And someone who wanted to get in the music industry and they were working on establishing a relationship over quite a period of time to become business partners. And this person had a very unrealistic expectation coming from the beverage industry that the music industry was going to be the same thing. You put your dollar in the machine, you get your product back out and you get what you put your money in for immediately. And the music industry doesn't work that way, as Steve was explaining. And as he had explained to this business partner several times, however, they just didn't get that it didn't sink in and consequently the partnership was not did not end up proving to be fruitful so i think that's the same thing that's happened here with guitar center you have a big company aries management who has put a lot of money into acquiring a business in an industry they don't really understand and they're trying to run it just as a business without looking at it from the side of that it is part of a music business and so now here we are uh, yeah, I did. I just happened to see that comment, Chris. Yeah, I did hear that too. My wife mentioned that to me this morning. That sucks. Uh, side, sidebar, but Sean Connery passed away at 90 years old. Uh, I think he'd been in pretty bad health for a long time because we'd not seen anything publicly from him in forever. There were rumors that he had Alzheimer's disease and hadn't heard anything from him. So yeah, that he was very much an insanely gifted artist and actor. So yeah, thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate that because we need to celebrate these people while we have them, not just when we lose them, but whether it's a musician or a actor or an artist, recognize the talents they have. So thank you for that, Chris. I appreciate you bringing that up. Uh, 
Guitar Center getting back to that. I think I saw something pop up as a notification on my other screen that it looks like that may be official that they filed bankruptcy yesterday or today. So what that means for them long term, I don't know. I guess we'll see. But it's just another sad example, I think, of growth being the ultimate goal of a company or an organization and consequently it being to the detriment long term of what happens to a business. And Guitar Center is a big one in our industry, in the music industry, that will be felt if they go away completely, that will be felt in this industry for a while. So Guitar Center, it sucks that you filed bankruptcy for my friends that work for the company. My heart goes out to you, Josh, you guys there in the Springfield store in Springfield, Missouri. Man, I reach out. If you need to talk, let me know. I would be more than happy just to chat because this sucks and it should have never got to this point. So enough of that. Let's move on. We've got one more piece of news to cover this week, and then we will jump into our weekly guitar lesson. So uh, this is on a happier note. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me open it up here. We have a Frank Zappa documentary coming out. For those of you not familiar with Frank Zappa, the man was a freaking genius. He's been gone almost 30 years now. He died in the early 90s. <coughs> but man, he was a musical genius and a cultural icon for his 25 plus years that he was active as a musician and just as Zappa. So I'm going to actually show the trailer to this, and then we're going to talk a little bit about it, because, man, this looks incredible, and I'm super excited to see this when it comes out. Remember, we always play when people ask us to play more, because we know that after we play this, they couldn't possibly ever want to hear us again. We were loud, we were coarse, and we were strange. But he had so much talent, it defied everything. <laughs> You insist on very high and exacting standards. Well, I think if you shoot any lower than that, you're going to wind up with something sleazy. Watch out where the huskies go, don't you beat that yellow snow. He was just writing all the time. He wouldn't stop. He heard things a particular way, and then he tried to manifest them in the world. He shook. Got to pause that for just a second. If you're a guitar player, you may recognize that voice. If you didn't, that would be uh, the one and only Steve Vai. And, uh... If you know Steve's history, you know exactly why you're hearing him. If you don't know Steve's history, uh, he got his start in the music industry thanks to Frank Zappa. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway, keep playing. Uh, well, if it will, if the computer will agree with me. And we've evidently launched it into another window. So, let me close that guy out. Thank you for humoring me and dealing with my technical difficulties as they happen, so. Any kind of rock star, especially the British guys who came to town, wanted to meet Frank. I haven't heard anything like it before or since. Frank embodied everything. You couldn't say, oh yeah, that's rock and roll, because it wasn't. It's jazz, no, it's pop music, no. Well, what the hell is it? It's Zappa. Hey there, people, I'm Bobby Brown. The Parents Music Resource Center wants a labeling system. Frank became the go-to person because nobody else in the record industry showed up. And my name is Bobby Brown. We live in a country where we're supposed to be free. We supposedly have democracy here. What do we do? Sit around and go, hmm. He was on a mission, and he was going to accomplish that mission no matter what. I'm in the process to see if it's possible for me to run for president in the United States. It's time for a revolution. At every point in his life, he was trying to do the best thing that he could to have no regrets. Don't waste your So there you go, the Frank Zappa uh, documentary that's coming out. That is going to be incredible. I'm so freaking excited for that. Let me stop the uh, video playback here, and we'll read just a little bit through it. Here's an interesting fun fact to go along with the Zappa documentary. Uh, it is being, or it, it was directed by Alex Winter. That would be 
If I remember correctly, Bill S. Preston Esquire, I believe, from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. He's done music videos and he's done some movies as well, and this looks incredible. Uh, it says, uh, Bill and Ted star Alex Winter, who was granted unfettered access to the Zappa Family Trust and all archival footage. The film itself explores the private life behind the mammoth musical career that never shied away from the political turbulence of its time. That would be 100% accurate. So, scrolling down here, uh, in addition to Zappa's widow, Gail Zappa, the film ensures that musical collaborators... The film features interviews with musical collaborators including Steve Vai, Mike Keneally, Ian Underwood, Pamela Desbars, Bunk Gardner, David Harrington, Scott Thunes, Ruth Underwood, Ray White, and others. Frank Zappa was not only a creative genius, but also a great and eloquent thinker who articulated the madness of his times with extraordinary clarity and wit, said Winter. A legitimate maverick who lived and worked among the, amongst other extraordinary people in historic times, ultimately Zappa is not a retro trip into the past, but a thoroughly modern explanation, exploration of a man whose worldview, art, and politics were far ahead of their time and profoundly relevant in our challenging times. Added Ahmet Zappa, one of the film's producers and Frank's son, I'm thrilled Magnolia is bringing the Zappa movie to the world. This emotional journey began with my mother's belief in Alex Winter, and he's made an extraordinary film. I'm so grateful for, to the fans who contributed to the Kickstarter campaign. Their support was invaluable, as is our partnership with UMG. I feel in my heart Frank and Gail will be so proud of the documentary, and I can't wait for everyone to see it. The Zappa movie will be released in the U.S. on November 27th. For more information, head to Zappa movie. So, I am freaking crazy, ecstatic, excited about that, and I cannot wait for that movie to drop. I will definitely be watching that as soon as it comes out. So that's it for the news this week. Uh, let's go ahead and let's jump into this week's mini guitar lesson then. Uh, as I say when I'm recording this, cue the mini guitar intro, 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 and there'll be this fun little record going. And we're at the mini guitar lesson. Ha <laughs> ha. So for this week's mini guitar lesson, sorry if you don't know me, I'm a little bit of a dork and a little bit of a nerd. So for this week's lesson, since it is Halloween, and Chris, you asked earlier, are we going to learn something Halloween related? Yes, we are. So uh, let's make sure you can hear the guitar there. Let me know if you give me a thumbs up or comment. Let me know if you can hear the guitar. You should be able to hear it. If I need to turn it up a little, let me know. And I'm going to assume everybody can hear that guitar uh, based on the fact that I'm not seeing otherwise. So for this week's mini guitar lesson, what I thought we'd do is I thought we'd do a look at a couple of things. It's Halloween, so we want to do something Halloween themed, Halloween related, yes? Seems cool to me. So let's talk about scary, eerie music and how we can create that scary, eerie music. So the first thing I want to talk about is something known as Diablo in El Musica or the devil in music. Uh, this is something that is related to what's called a tritone, depending on how new you are to guitar and or music, music theory. Awesome, glad you can hear it, Chris, thank you. Depending on how new you are to music theory and or music, you may or may not know what a tritone is. Uh, this is something that was actually banned for a long time back in the uh, distant past, 1200s, 1300s, by the Catholic Church when they kind of ruled the world. Uh, they saw uh, the tritone as being the devil in music because of the feelings of dread and or fear and or uneasiness that it creates. So what is a tritone, you might ask? Well, a lot of times you'll see people on guitar play a tritone as something that sounds like this. You hear that really weird, eerie dissonance between this and this? Well, what that is, what a tritone means, is that you have two tones that are separated by three whole steps. Now, we've covered this previously in earlier episodes of, Every of Everything Guitar and in the uh, lessons, but we'll talk about it now. Let me, first off, switch back over to scene two, and let's make sure you can see the guitar, because I want you to be able to see... Oh, got a pop-up on the phone. I want you to be able to see what is going on here. Oh, my gosh. So let's see, do 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 do. I need to take this guy and tilt him down quite a bit. 
and we need to turn the auto exposure off. Bear with me here for a second. Because I want to get that where you can actually see. And there we go. Oh, we're back and it's beautiful and you can actually maybe see a little more about what I'm talking about here. So let's zoom down on the guitar where you can see what's going on. Okay, so now you should be able to see the fretboard. Awesome. So the tritone, it is made by stacking two notes that are three whole steps or a tritone apart from each other. So what does that mean? Well, let's start with G, for example. A G note on the guitar, your lowest G you can play on a standard tuned six string guitar is down here. It's the third fret of the lowest string of the six string. That's your G. So as we learned in earlier episodes of Everything Guitar, what a whole step and a half step are, that's how many frets you play between notes. A whole step means there are two frets between two notes. So if we're starting on fret number three, playing our G, one whole step would be going two frets up higher to fret number five, that would be an A. Okay, another whole step up, two frets higher, would be the seventh fret, that would be a B. Another whole step, two more frets higher, would be a C sharp. So with the tritone, what we're getting is we're playing two notes that are three whole steps apart. So meaning if we're playing a G, three whole steps up, we'd have one, two, three, would be our C sharp. So that's what gives us our tritone, that really dissonant, eerie sounding. And you can put an octave above it on a guitar if you put play an octave, if you're familiar with that with a root five power chord. So let's talk about what that means and how that works. So if we've got our first finger on the third fret of our lowest string, our G, then we play our tritone. We'll use our middle finger on the fourth fret of string number five to get our C sharp. Well, based on the intervals and how a guitar is tuned naturally, if we use our third finger on the fifth fret of string number four, we get another G, only an octave higher or 12 frets higher. So you can actually play a tritone with three fingers. Or you can just play it just with the two, because the tritone technically is the, your space between a G and a C sharp. Or in this case, if we move it around, oh my gosh, all the pop-ups on my phone. I'm working on getting an interface where I can use my phone and where it'll give me a clean output, meaning you won't see all the screen stuff. So that'll be coming. Hang in there for future live streams. So, tritone on G, G and C sharp, three whole steps apart. Same thing if we go up to C. Our tritone is going to be an F sharp. Same form also. So even if you don't remember the notes, if you just remember when you're playing on a guitar, if you're on your bottom four strings, if you play one finger on a fret, if you go one string lower and one fret higher, that shape, that gives you a tritone. Doesn't matter where you're at. If you're on those bottom four strings, the four lowest pitch strings, the thickest strings, you're gonna get a tritone if you play one fret and then a fret higher the next string down. And remember, if you want to put the octave above it, you can do the same thing by going one fret higher on the next string. All right, so now what can you use that for? Well, you can use that a lot when you're writing melodies. You could use the tritone interval. So if you're playing it, if you're writing a melody, you could use something like. Which is a weird dissonant sounding thing. Now, the other thing you can do though with tritones is you can do tritone chords. So for instance, we're gonna go to C minor here. If we play a C minor chord, and this is a weird form of C minor, but if we play a C minor chord, and then we go down to an F sharp minor, here we still get that same weird dissonance. And we can move intervals up. Let's put in a G sharp. So 
So you can play around with that. Just remember that interval. Even if you're doing chords, you just go three whole steps in between. So if you're playing a C, play an F. And C, it can even be major. You can play a C major and then play an F major. Doesn't sound quite as eerie to me or quite as scary as if you're playing the minor chords. But you can do that though. So tritones, play around with those in your writing a little bit. If you wanna write something really spooky, really scary, if you have a very devout Catholic family and you wanna piss them off, pardon me, shouldn't have said that word, but it's something that it gives you some interest to your playing. So now let's talk about a second concept that goes along with this, and this is going to be a scale that I learned from Rick Beato. If you're not familiar with Rick, his Everything Music channel here on YouTube, Rick is the man when it comes to music. Uh, so uh, make sure to check out his channel. I'll put the link to it down below. But this is what's called the double harmonic minor scale. And this is also, it, he listed it, or he called it the darkest scale. It is also a very eerie scale. So let's talk about a scale real quick. C major, our standard C scale, where we start, is built like this. The notes of that are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Pretty happy sounding. All right, so C harmonic minor is a minor scale that sounds like this. So what is a C harmonic major or a C double harmonic major? What that is, is you're taking your standard C major scale, remember this guy, and we're taking our second and our sixth, and we'll talk about what that means here in a minute, and we're making both of those flat, or one half step, one semitone lower than normal. So, what does that mean? Well, our root is our first, or our one. So normally our two, or our second, would be a D in C major but we want to take that two and we want to flat it. We want to lower it by one semitone, or you probably guessed it, one step. So that becomes a D flat. So instead of going, we do. All right, then we play the next three steps of our scale, the same as normal, E, F, G. That would be three, four, five, our third, our fourth, our fifth. Now for our sixth, that's also flat. So instead of playing an E, we play an E flat. And then we have our seventh, which is a B, or pardon me, an A flat, not an E flat, I apologize. We have our seventh, which is a B. Then we have our octave, which is a C again. So instead of it being this, it is C, D flat, E, F, G, A flat, B, C. Or you can play the fingering like this, you want to make it a little bit easier. You can play C, D flat, E, F, G, slide that finger up one fret, A flat, B, C. That may sound a little familiar for those of you that have been into music for a while, if you remember the old Offspring song, Come Out and Play. That main riff is based kind of around that scale. Well, that's a, very, that's a variation of that C, or that's a partial of that C harmonic double, mi double harmonic minor scale. Only if you play the scale all the way up from the root up to the octave, it is. So, C harmonic, C double harmonic minor scale. <coughs> 
If you take those two and you combine the two of them together, you can get some very, very interesting, very dark sounding music. So let me kick on the looper here. And we're gonna record just a chord progression and we'll improvise a little bit over it with the melodies. We're gonna go between our C minor and our F minor. And then occasionally we'll throw in a G sharp minor as well. Whoop, pardon. And we're gonna real quickly wipe that out and re-record it real quick. So I wanna make sure I got it perfect for you guys. And I'll just do it here on bar chords. Once again, this is live, so mistakes happen. So here we go. So now we've got that chord progression looping. We've got our C minor, and we've got our F sharp minor, and then we go up to our G. So now what we can do is we can take that scale that we have. Let me pause this here for a second. We can take that scale that we were learning, that C double harmonic minor, and we can improvise over the top of this chord progression with those notes. So. So there you go, C double harmonic major. A uh, very interesting, very odd, very dark sounding scale. And if you take that and you play that along with the right chord progression, you can get some very unusual sounding chords. So uh, that's it for the mini, unusual sounding chords and melodies, I should say. So that's it for the mini guitar lesson this week. Uh, let's talk now about a gear review, something cool that I've had for a little while. But I wanted to share with everybody, and I thought since this is kind of a special, unusual episode, I thought I would go ahead and we would uh, check out a gear review today. So let me reposition the secondary camera. And what we're going to be looking at today is, if I can get it angled right. Uh, let's see here. Let's go back to scene number two. It's not my keyboard, although yay, I've got a keyboard. That's always fun. But we're gonna be looking at. This guy. 
This is my Behringer Vintage Tube Overdrive TO800. Now, uh, first off, I want to apologize. The camera angle isn't better. I don't have a overhead tripod or something like that I could use for the phone since I'm using the main tripod I have for the main camera for a cam as opposed to for B cam. However, I wanted to show you guys this one for a couple reasons. One, because I think it's an awesome value for the money. And secondly, because this is a special episode for a live streaming episode. So I wanted to do a gear review as well to give you a little bit of additional content. So uh, here's my signal right now, just so you know the signal path. Got my Ibanez RG470 AHM, my favorite, one of my favorite guitars, probably my number two guitar behind my Hamer Centara. Uh, going into that TC Electronics Ditto Looper X2 that we were just using. I've got that turned off currently, obviously. Then we're going out of the looper into the TO800 Overdrive. And then out of the TO800 Overdrive into my Fractal Audio XFX2 XL. Running the tone you've been hearing, which right now is a preset called USA Clean that I've set up, which is a pretty clean, crystal clear sounding guitar tone. And then out of that, running into the effects loop on my Egnator Tweaker Head, which is a uh, 5 watt or 15 watt it's switchable all tube head. And then gonna jump out of that into my Egnator 112 cabinet, which is off camera over there. You can kind of see it right there, I think. No, it's off camera a little bit. That's mic'd with a Shure SM57, and then that's going directly into the computer. You're hearing it, I believe, hopefully through Logic Pro. Hopefully you're hearing the sounds, but I don't know that 100% for sure. Or if you're just hearing just the raw bare signal. But anyway, uh, so the Behringer, what can you use this guy for? Well, you can use it as a distortion pedal, or you can use it just as a clean boost pedal to kind of boost the front end. So let's kind of play around with it a little bit. It has three knobs, as you'll see here. You've got your distortion knob or your drive knob. You've got your tone knob that goes from low to high, and you've got your level knob. Then, of course, it's got a nice handy little LED that lights up red so you know when it's lit up. Uh, so let's start out looking at it as it's set right now. So I've got the drive all the way down, got the level all the way up, and I've got the tone all the way down. So just as a reminder, this is what our tone sounds like without it. We kick it on without the drive engage, but with everything else going. It still boosts our signal, and you'll hear we get a little bit of edge. So that's cool. Obviously we can play with our tone knob so as we turn it up brighter, get a little more hair on the top end. If we turn it all the way up, it gets almost a little too bright for my taste, at least on this uh, setting on my Axe FX. To me that starts getting a little thin sounding. Let's kick on the, the bridge humbucker on the Ibanez also because it's a little bit hotter output. That's a little bright, so I'd turn the tone down a little. Now, what happens as we increase the drive? It's a little bit more grit to it. It still isn't like a heavy metal distortion right now, obviously, but you hear it's a little more distortion to it. And we keep increasing that drive. Now we're starting to hear a little bit more saturation. And there's a, <coughs> I apologize, a little bit of noise there. So pretty cool in its own right. Uh, the really cool thing you can do with it also though, man, I have all the pop-ups on my phone. Oh my good gracious. Really cool thing you can do with it also though is if you go to a distorted amp sound, you can use it as a clean boost on the front end and what it does is it really tightens up the sound of that amp. So let me switch presets here on the XFX. 
And we may have to play a little bit with the volume level. I fully expect that's got to be the case. Okay, so here's a preset that's based off the Friedman BE amp. So this is kind of my go-to distorted sound. So this is what it sounds like without the pedal. Now, if we kick on the uh, Tube Screamer, you're going to notice it gets a little more distortion. But you're also going to notice that the low end kind of tightens up and it doesn't sound quite as flubby. This guitar is just tuned to standard tuning, so we don't have real, real low frequencies anyway. But if you hear what I'm talking about, you hear the difference between this. And if we kick on the Tube, the, pardon me, Tube Overdrive, we'll talk about what that means here in a minute, it changes the sound a bit. Without, without it, with it, out, with. Other thing you'll notice is it definitely accentuates the mid frequencies. It actually is not what you call a clean boost pedal, meaning where it doesn't affect the frequencies. That the This circuit, the tube overdrive circuit, has a very, very define mid-range kind of hump or mid-range bump to the sound in it. So I'm trying to get this guy where you can see it a little better on camera. So without... And I love this preset. This is probably my favorite preset I've created in the XFX yet. But without, and then with. One thing it really does since it boosts that mid-range so much is you can really dig in and get those squeals and those pinch harmonics really, really, really well with it engaged on the front end of an amp, or in this case, a amp sim. <laughs> So, now let's talk a little bit about this guy. The reason I'm so hyped about this, the reason I love it so much, wanted to share with everybody, is if you've been playing guitar for any length of time, you know that what this is is a clone of the Ibanez Tube Screamer, which is probably like the penultimate overdrive guitar pedal, unless you're looking for a clean boost. The Tube Screamer first came out in the early 1980s with the TS-8, I believe, or TS-9 is what it was called. Looked very similar, same green color. And it has been confirmed by Josh from GHS Pedals. And Josh is just a pedal guru. Once again, check him out. I'll put the link to GHS Pedals page down in the description of this video. If you haven't ever seen his page, oh my gosh, you need to. If you're remotely interested in guitar pedals and you're a nerd, you need to check him out. But anyway, Josh has confirmed that the TO800 Behringer, it is a clone of the circuit in the classic... Uh, Ibanez Tube Screamer. So I know my friend Brian Bauer, I'll put a link to Brian's video down below as well, uh, did a comparison between a Tube Screamer and a TO800. I don't remember if he had a TO9, a T, TS8 or if he had a or TS9 or TS808, but there were little subtle slight differences between the two of them in sound. But man, you really had to be listening to hear the difference. And here's where it becomes awesome. An Ibanez Tube Screamer, if you buy a current one, a new one, they're going to set you back about $120 to $130, I believe, somewhere around there. If you want a vintage TS9, one of the original little guys with the little silver button on it, you're talking several hundred dollars to get one, and then you got to hope it's still been taken care of and it still works well because, I mean, you're talking a almost 40-year-old guitar pedal at this point. This little dude, though, 
this little guy right here? How does $29 sound? How does that strike you? You can't fill up most tanks on cars for the cost of that. It's a steal if you want a tube screamer type distortion circuit just to play around with. If you've always been curious about it and you haven't really, you weren't really 100% sure if you wanted one or not, you can spend $100 on a new Ibanez. You can spend a few hundred dollars on a vintage one if you got that money and you can just to roll with. Or if you want to try it out, 30 bucks. It's a freaking no brainer. Check it out. So that's the gear review for this week. I the uh, <laughs> sorry to call it Ibanez because it's the exact same freaking thing. The Behringer TO800. Uh, the only thing you want to keep in mind is if you play out a lot, just as an addendum, this guy is made out of plastic, so it's probably not going to be as durable as one of the Ibanez pedals. But if you're like me and you play predominantly in your home studio, you do a lot of recording, there's no reason not to buy this guy for 30 bucks. I guarantee you, check it out. You know, if you don't love it, you're out 30 bucks. Skip your McDonald's for two or three weeks. Skip your Starbucks for a week. You covered the cost of your pedal. So anyway, that's it for the gear review this week. And that is it for episode 20, this first ever live stream of everything guitar on my YouTube channel. Uh, once again, as, it, as if it wasn't painfully obvious, this was my first live stream. So I appreciate you hanging in there while we had some technical difficulties while I was figuring out the lay of the land on how some things work. Like right now, for example, when I'm going to switch back to my main scene where you can see me a little better. But uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I can't believe I've been doing this for 20 weeks. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, that's not real long. We're talking five months. But 20 episodes of this. If you want to learn more about this show, if you want to learn more about the guitar, go back and check them out. I'll put a link to the playlist of all 20 episodes up here in the saved version of this live stream that I'm going to upload and put on my YouTube channel as well. Uh, at least I'm going to try, assuming that I had enough space that I was able to save it. Keep your fingers crossed for me. Hard drive's getting a little full on the primary hard drive on my workstation. But uh, also, I would love it if you would click the subscribe button down below. Uh, I'm relatively new to doing YouTube, about 20 weeks or so, about five months, trying to grow my channel uh, because I love putting out content. In addition to uh, Everything Guitar on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, 3 p.m. G or 3 p.m. GMT, I also put out a mini guitar lesson every Tuesday. That's at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I believe that'd be about 8 p.m. GMT. And I've been doing vintage gear reviews on a weekly basis that come out on Thursdays at 3 p.m. What is vintage gear? Well, in my case, it's going back to when I first started playing guitar. So a lot of really cool 80s guitar gear that a lot of people have never even heard of. I've been checking those out and doing in-depth reviews of those things like the ADA MP2. The uh, Korg A2, the Roland GP8. This next week coming up, I have the most 80 of all 80s guitar processors and rack mount preamps. The ART SGX 2000 Express that even looks like a pair of your jam shorts, if you remember what those are, if you're old like me from the 80s. So, once again, I'd love it if you click the subscribe button down below. Uh, ring the bell for notifications, because I am going to be doing some more live streams, just kind of ad hoc on the spur of the moment, and I'd love for you to know about those. And if you found this live stream to be fun, funny, useful, entertaining, any or all of the above, go ahead and give me a thumbs up on it as well. So take care. Hope you all had a great week. I hope your weekend is going awesome. Enjoy Halloween. Eat too much candy. Get sick on the candy. If you have kiddos, obviously 2020 is a weird time with COVID, but maybe try to take them out trick-or-treating, even if you do it like something like a at-distance trunk-or-treat or something like that, even though I'm not a big fan of the trunk-or-treat idea in general. Be safe out there, but let your kids be kids. Let them have some fun. So take care, everybody, and I'll look forward to seeing you all on the flip side. Bye.